Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Coming up this week, we have a new giant-sized wheel standard. We have a competition as well as hot tech from the website. And our main talking point this week is good. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> tech that sucks. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Right, on to it. Tech that sucks. Yeah. I'm going to start off with one that some, not everyone's going to agree with, but rim brake carbon clinchers. What? What's wrong with them? Well, so you used to get a lot of people buying rim brake carbon clinchers, spending a lot of money on them. Yeah. And because the the on that particular type of design wheel, you've got the outward pressure of the clincher pushing outwards, hmm. and then you've got the heat and inward pressure of the braking in the same place on the rim, you were, it was just a point of weakness and you'd often get delamination of, of wheels. And I know loads of people who've delaminated right. their wheels on long descents or in Grand Fondos or whatever because they were using carbon clinches. Also, crap braking in the wet. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the, the, the thing is, is like when, you know, the pros in the rim brake era all using um, tubulars. Yeah. So they don't have that same weakness point on, on the uh, as a carbon clincher would. That's a good argument, all right. And it's something that we don't really <coughs> see anywhere near as much delaminations no, now. No, we don't. Um, everyone's using disc brakes. Still do sneak a few wee wheel failures in there now and again, don't they? Yeah. Uh, so, all right, my turn next. They were rubbish. <laughs> Radar real lights. Yeah. Oh. I just don't get it. I We spoke about this weeks back, and people hated on me for saying that I didn't get it. But I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get I'm it. I'm with you on it. But since then, I've gone out and I've tried a radar rear light to try to understand the tech, to try to test it out, and I've gone, do you know what? I'm, I still don't think it's a good idea. What, what happened? Well, it just didn't really work that great. Cars drove at me just the same, and when there's someone behind me, it stops the radar working. <sighs> yeah. It's just, a, it's just not perfected for me. I... Agree. <laughs> I just think with a radar rear light, yeah. there's that thing of, you know, these things, they, they make a noise or whatever, or they try, they buzz and tell you there's a car. Like, if a car's going to hit you... It's game over. It's going to hit you. The yeah. radar rear light is not going to mm. stop it. I think it's... My ears tend to be really good. At ears don't have batteries but maybe, either. Maybe, if this tech could improve a bit and be a bit better... Yeah. And if we live in an era where cars get super quiet because everyone's in quiet electronic vehicles, yeah. electric vehicles, then you can't hear the engine as much. Maybe then actually they become, they become more useful. All right, there's potential. Um, controversial one I'm going to sort of throw out there. Cable disc brakes suck. I just What about people that can't afford hydraulic disc brakes? Perhaps you might be able to get a better braking performance from a well set up rim brake bike. Mm. I just think about that then. But at least it, there is one advantage to cable disc brakes is that if you say you buy a bike and that's how it's spec because it's at that sort of price point, at least you've got uh, wheels and a frame that's capable of being upgraded in the but future. They do work. They do work, but I don't. I think I think the hierarchy of brakes. I'm moving my laptop to the side. Here, just laying this out. Rim brake. No, rim brake in the middle. Hydraulic disc brakes up top. Cable disc brakes close by rim brakes. So just, just while below. while cable disc brakes are rubbish compared to hydraulic disc brakes, yeah, I agree with you on that. I don't want to say that they suck, okay, because the reason they exist is because they're cheaper. Yeah, and they do work. It's agree to disagree. They do work. They do work. Yeah, I, I can't follow Alex, that. Alex, you're just being a snob. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to discuss? They're gonna. Because I've are, got a little you list are going. Get. I mean, there's going to be contracts called out on you in the comments. Oh, Everyone's yeah. just going to... People aren't going to be happy. But whatever. Embrace it. With, it's a sharing. Solid tyres. Yeah, they do so. Did you see the video I made where I used those really cheap, bright green tyres? They're the worst things I've ever fitted to my bike. Solid tyres are terrible. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'd awful. never recommend anyone get solid tyres. Occasionally, people go, oh, I'm not bothered about being fast. Yeah. And I commute, and I don't want to get a puncture. I know. I'm going to get solid tyres. Mm. And then... But they're just so you, slow. Yeah, but they're awful to ride. Yeah, okay. Um, rubbish lubricants. This was one of yours, wasn't it? You, you like to hate on this tech. Crap lubes. Yeah. Crap lubes. Yeah. Well, yeah, just, it's, 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 see the point. Um, like, again, the, the, the information is now out there. 
where you can find out what is a good lube. And we're not saying that everyone needs to go and wax their, their chain, but there are much there are there are lubes and there's lubes. All and, right. And the crap ones are so crap at attracting dirt and like <laughs> No, they're good. Up. No, the crap ones are good at attracting dirt. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, to the point where they just wear out your components way quicker and look dirty and horrible, yeah. and it's just a, it's just not good. And and there's no, there's no like greater effort required to put on a good drip lube versus right. a crap one. And the crap one just costs you more money, far more money in the long run by wearing out your bits. Don't have worn out bits, do you? Um, oversized pulley wheels. I'm going to throw it out there. I think it's a tech that, in some cases, kind of sucks. Why? They look good. They do look good. People love to hate on them, though. I am... I'm actually... I'm throwing it out there, because I'm, like, 50-50 on this. Sometimes I think they're quite cool. I've Sometimes seen them on suck. your bikes. Well, that's the time I think they're cool. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it's like... <laughs> there's loads of different options, basically. There's some which are really nicely well-made things. Like, there's a bit of engineering gone into it. There's some thought process. And there's also ones which are made on, like, on the cheap. Mm. And then I think they kind of suck. I... Yeah. <laughs> but... People, I think people a lot of the time are just putting them on their bikes just because it's like, or oh, let's call it bike jewellery. It's a bit yeah. like when people mod cars and put stuff on their car. That isn't make, always better. Yeah, yeah. but they're doing they're it happy. for like, they're putting a body kit on their car to like, because that's what they're into. Or they lower their car and stance their car. I think that looks rubbish, but they're, <laughs> people are going to hate okay. me saying that. But like, some people are into it. And they're doing it not necessarily, you know what I mean? It's for the look. Yeah, it's for the look. All right, I'll let it go. Plus, if you are, like you say, oh, uh, oversized pulley wheel systems, they do make a teeny tiny, teeny, teeny tiny improvement. I think, yeah, a so. little bit. Okay, and um, going rolling back the years a little bit, crap rain jackets. You know the ones that were quite literally made of clear plastic oh, I have and were like a bin bag. I had one of those. Yeah, they were absolutely awful. Rubbish. They sucked. Dreadful. They sucked. Helmet mirrors, I think they suck. No, you're wrong. What do you mean that I'm wrong? Helmet mirrors don't Helmet suck. Helmet mirrors suck. No, but they're like... Hel wrong. Right. Radar light, yeah. We're in agreement on that. Helmet mirror, same kind of vibe in that it's like a safety thing that people are putting on their bikes. Yeah. Anything that's like trying to improve safety, I think you've got to give it a bit more and, and they yeah. do work because and especially for people who are struggling with like neck mobility trust me i've been there <laughs> i can't look behind me it's my neck it's yeah like when you can't when you struggle to look round more over your shoulder having a mirror there where you can then see is good and it's a bit more discreet and probably a bit more aero um, although helmet Don't mirror, you tell me how, uh, than, than having, it's nicer than having one of the, the big ones. Some people prefer it to having one of the big ones on the side of. Well, your I think that's handlebars. better. I just think the helmet mirrors. I've got one in the office upstairs at my desk, and it, I I can't see anything behind me. It's no good. You've not seen mirror, it up right. Mirror on my handlebars, I'd see behind me lovely. Well, it's right. not for me, but I can appreciate that some people benefit from having and feel safer on the roads having a helmet mirror. So All right. I don't think they suck. Last bit of tech that sucks then, this is one of your items. Oh, airbag helmets. Oh yeah, oh, I've, having more. just said, two more, well, having yeah. just said I, anything that promotes safety. <laughs> yeah. The problem is, so airbag helmets have been around a few years now. There's, there's a few, I've tried them out hmm. and I just don't see it. Like, if, just if this said is Dragon's safety's Den, great. I'm out. Wear a normal helmet. Just wear a normal helmet. But if you could have a helmet that was like a normal helmet, but slightly safer. It's not that, is it though? I've, I've no idea, I'm just throwing it out there. Is it slightly safer? Absolutely not a clue. Because I'm not convinced. And, and, and I, helmets are good now, and hmm. you've... So the, the issue is, is you wear this like, rather than having a helmet on your head, and I've got a picture of me wearing one because I've tried them out. Yeah. You you have this huge collar on, right? <laughs> yeah. But that gets really hot and sweaty. Yeah. So... And reduces how much you can look behind you, so then you need a helmet mirror. But it's you like haven't got a helmet a, on, so you couldn't have the mirror. It's like wearing a neck brace, <laughs> and it's really hot and sweaty to wear one of those things. And it's, you know, so if you were on a hot day, it was quite uncomfortable. Yeah. And 
you're like, well, people don't want to wear them because they don't want to mess their hair up. Mm. But if you ride, then that's, that's one of the arguments. So people like, I don't want to wear a helmet and get helmet hair. But if you're riding your bike without a hat on, your hair's and you've got go long everywhere. hair, it's just going to blow everywhere anyway. All right, guys, got that off your chest. And then <laughs> final thing on tech that we think kind of sucks a little bit, on-bike aero sensors. I got, I'm not sure I really have much of a thought on this, but I'm assuming you do. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, you know, so the whole load of these devices have come out over the years. Yeah. And it, in, and I was really excited, like, like a lot of people when they first came out, because you think, yeah. oh wow, I can have like a mobile wind tunnel, and I can ride around, and I'm still yet to see a device that is you can actually use. Because I've tried using them, and I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've tried to go into very controlled environments, and, and the amount of rigour that you have to apply in order to use it in an outdoor real-world environment and get meaningful data yeah. make, renders them totally impractical. So to get accurate information on the amount of time, effort and money you've got to go through, you could maybe just go to the wind tunnel. Or a velodrome. Or a velodrome. All and, right. Like, it's just... Yeah, like, I just don't... I, yeah, there's too many variables outside to get good data, I would say. I think it's really difficult, and you can't... And the other problem is, and we're getting nerdy now, um, is is I've I'm yet to see any device that can correct for CRR and changes in CRR, which is uh, rolling resistance. Yeah. So you can't correct for the changes in surface. in in surface, and that makes a huge difference. So all of a sudden you're riding along and you go, oh, I've got way more aero. You haven't. The roads just got smoother. <laughs> yeah, I can see that's a slight flaw. Anyway, those are some of the bits that came to the top of our heads when we think of tech that sucks. Um, but let us know in the comments section down below what tech you think that sucks. And then, um, well, we can discuss it next week, can't we? This is a collaboration between Moots and WTB, I think it is. Mm. They've, they've come up with a new standard, would you believe it? Another new standard. A bigger wheel size, and they're calling it six, no, 750D. We've had, we've had 650B, 700C, 750D. I mean, come on, what's going on there? I'm sure it makes sense. <laughs> it does make sense. So I've got the idea, the idea behind it is um, road and gravel wheels and tires are technically 29 inch, the same as mountain bike 29 inch wheels, but that's just talking about the inner bead surface. When you take into account that a mountain bike tire is much wider and chunkier then the overall outer diameter is quite a bit bigger than what you get on a gravel bike. So this new standard has increased the inner bead diameter to account for the fact that when you use a gravel sort of size tire, the overall size is now pretty much the same as a 29 and mountain bike tire. So do you need a special bike? Yes. To accommodate this wheel? I believe so. <laughs> and you need special wheels and special tyres and a lot of special stuff. So whilst I think the idea and the principle behind it is good, it's going to be interesting to see whether we see it like develop further and become a bit more mainstream or whether it stays as a real like niche option out there for certain bike brands. We will see. Um, hmm. If you want to see a, a, well, a rather nice Moots titanium bike yes. in action, Check out Sai's Inferno um, ride, which is this amazing ride in the Alps where he basically went from um, Annecy all the way down to Monton yeah. um, on the Côte d'Azur Slightly in two days. A slightly less glamorous ride at the weekend was Hank's most remote pub ride, mm. which they did a lot less cycling as well. Yeah, and well, <coughs> on that they were using Yolio bikes, which there was some... A lot of comments picked up on. Loads of comments picked up on that and also a nice time to mention the YOLO competition we have running mm. where you got the chance to win one of three um, of those G21 gravel frame sets. There'll be a link in the link in the description down below to the competition and um, entries close at 10 o'clock Friday 8th of September. Yeah, and if you are entering a competition to win a YOLO bike <laughs> it's not going to be from one of those stupid <laughs> accounts on, on <clears throat> posting in the comments. No. Oh, just all the scammers. Watch out for all the stupid scammers in the comments section. Ugh. Telegram me, you've won. Here's my WhatsApp yeah. number. Don't trust it. Yeah. Don't. Oh. Um, hot Tech from the World to finish it off from Hot Tech. Um, DSM, we're using a new base layer. You were telling me ah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, so we're, many of the viewers will be now familiar with the concept of the aero bra. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were wearing a new aero bra from Rule 28. 
who make aero bras <coughs> yeah. under their skin suits, and it's one that's actually tuned for a faster speed. So this one is is apparently if a high speed aero bra. A high speed aero bra. <laughs> I for, can't believe this. For over fifty kilometers an hour. There's no point in me ever having one of those. They go over fifty kilometers. No, you're pretty quick. Ah, now and again. Um, and they um, they won the team time trial. Impressive. Although. I think, in fairness, it wasn't totally down to the aero bra. Might you, did you, in the rain part, down the to darkness. the fact that they had less rain and were also in the light. And um, really quick, cool fact for you. Sai told me this earlier. Mm. Dan, uh, I think one of the cash off uh, of a bet he made on the Vuelta on the team did. Trial stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, there you go. Interesting. Um, also, there's a rumour to discuss before we end Hot Tech. Ooh. Potentially, I saw, uh, I saw this online actually, a rumour that Lotto Destiny may well be switching bike brands from Ridley to Orbea. Ooh. Don't know if there's any truth behind that, but it was online. So I was I on Hedge News Brad posted mm. that. Um, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Lotto it would Destiny be cool. riding Orbeas. The, well, let's fuel the other big rumour. <laughs> go on. About is Ineos going to merge with Quickstep? We don't know. We don't know. But if they did, what bike would they ride? A Pinarello or a Specialized? Or a new bike, a Specialized F. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What, I'd, what would you rather see them ride? Ah. Uh, I, I, I like the look of the Pinarellos, but yeah. that's arguably what some people say they really don't like. Yeah, so, I like it, yeah. Yeah, all right, there you go. I don't know. Anyway, more hot tech next week. Yeah. Quickly, before we dive into comments of the week, we should mention the big Spanish bike ride, shouldn't we? Big, I, big red Spanish bike ride. Yeah, although I'm sporting the uh, GCN La Vuelta t-shirt. Yeah. You like you it? Go. Well, we've got that and, and other designs available at shop.globalcyclingnetwork. So if you fancy some Vuelta GCN merch, yeah. check it out. Um, comments of the week, right? Last week's show. Mm. Shall I go first? Go for it. Okay, so... Astraus73 says, I'm absolutely loving the editing of this video when Ollie's wet wiping moves are turned into a disco dance. Laugh out loud. Does Ollie know that you did this to him? Hilarious. What are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've seen it. You <laughs> didn't know, because I immediately um, filmed it on my phone and WhatsApped it to everyone. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you go for the next one. Thanks for that. Um... Well, I'm glad I brought happiness and joy. Yeah, second to time some round, I'm enjoying people's it. lives. Play the clip again, quick. Oh. <laughs> Nozalad six nine five um, said, "Absolutely, the show I needed today." Laughed out loud. Great to see you two back, even though we know you dislike each other. <laughs> oh, we do. We hate. How each do other. they know that? Yeah, we hate each other so much. We went cycling we, together. We <laughs> That's it's all an elaborate ruse. Yeah. <laughs> we just forced um, it upon ourselves. We also had a couple of like kit checks on the channel last week um, for the two like, epic challenges that were happening. So uh, Hank and Mark's uh, trip to the most remote pub. Um, they are riding, as we mentioned earlier, like yeah. the Yolio uh, gravel bikes. Um, a lot of love for those. Yeah, people like to see something that's a bit different, don't they, I think? Yeah, so cool. Hello Weenie says, wow, the Chinese bikes are finally going mainstream. Um, and then there was also comments yeah. about Hank going over the handlebars. Ouch. Uh, next up, we had another kit check. It was this time it was the Moot CRD that Cy did. Went into loads of really interesting details about his bike and his setup here. Um, but nonetheless, even with all that cool information, people were still focused in on his Crocs, weren't yeah. they? <laughs> Uh, Peter McLean, 3053. This is one of the only bikes capable of keeping my eyes off of size Crocs. So he's proved us wrong, actually, there. But yeah. never mind. And Savage Pro said, the Croc on the head tube complements <laughs> the Croc on his feet. Yeah. I agree. Um, and what was also evident, I think, was just how knackered Cy si was when he was doing that video. <laughs> he, what, I could tell, like, he'd ridden... Yeah. ridden the event because he was like he clearly just got to Monton and done the bike check and then was like you could see he was yeah. tired he's like I'm done now yeah yeah. Um, one more comment that says they're a huge fan of internally routed cables not for aero properties but the clean look one day if I could afford a tie bike this would be the one there you go yeah, they are nice yeah I love a tie bike right the bike fault yeah Alice's favourite part of the show, where you submit pictures of your bikes in the GCN app, and then everyone can vote on them, uh, whether they're nice or super nice, but really, the only vote that matters is 
is us, we make the rules. Yeah. Uh, so the most super nice bike um, in the app last week was this from JKI33, a Cervelo Soloist. Oh, 7.6 kilos. Like it. Um, God, my screen's very dark. What do you make of that? There we go. Uh, it's very well presented. I like it. I like I, it a I lot. I think we can go super nice on that one. Yeah. Is that a GoPro nice. on the back or a radar light? I'm going to assume, given the benefit of the doubt, that's a GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, next in, faster bike blog with a factor Ostro Vam 23. Mm. I like it. It's nice, but that. Why have you taken a picture of it in front of that weird door? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Like, it's such a weird location. Are they. Is it me or are the handlebars like a bit of a funky design? How long is that stem? It looks like it's like 150. It's a big long boy. It is a long one. Uh, for me, I, I'm just going to go nice on that. I'm going to go nice. Yeah. And he's obviously watched Connor's most recent video about saddle angles as well. Just yeah. point the nose down. Um, Chuck of the North 77, check, uh, Trek Checkpoint A. ALR5. Oh no, he's leaning it on a tree. Oh, heartbreak. Oh. Heartbreak. Oh no. Can't have that. I mean, he claims. He claims it's not leaning on a tree. What? Oh yeah. Yeah. Ollie is not leaning on the tree. Well, what the hell is it leaning on then? I don't see a shadow stand. Yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Jace 0912 is a wind space T1550. That is a bit harsh from us, wasn't it? Yeah. Funny though. Mm. <laughs> Third time he's put it in the bike bowl. Oh, that's, nice out, every that's time. so out of order. Keep Fourth from... time lucky. Come on, we got this. Sorry. Oh. The wind space is cool though. Check this backdrop out. It's leaning against a rock, which is sort of unforgivable. Oh no, it's going to scratch on the rock, isn't it? <laughs> it's going to scratch the rock. It's going to, yeah. <laughs> no, you. Where oh. is that? Where is that taken? Uh, where is the? Where is the? Where is that? It doesn't. Can't confirm this. No. It could be anywhere. Um, I think it's a super nice bike, but. In, you you can't there, lean it on a rock. It's a nice. Yeah, it's just a nice. We can't be letting that slip. No. Um, David with a Scott Foil RC Ultimate next. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I'm inclined to just go for it with this. Oh, I'm I'm um, I'm digging that stealthy boy. Oh yeah. Campag wheel Shimano group ultras. set. Bora ultras. Yeah. Oversized pulley wheel system. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I think we've got this cleared up. Yeah. Well, it's. Yeah, we'll we'll go with it. I, I, I want a super That's nice. A super it. nice. It's a good choice of background because the bike stands out. You can see it. Okay. Next, what have we got? Miles to ride with a hand sling custom build. Oh, I love this. Colour's nice. Oh, look at that. Mm. That is a nice colour, isn't it? I just want to super nice it immediately. I like the, the Corsa Pro tyres, are really popping, aren't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, super nice that one. That was the last one for this week. Is it? Oh. Yeah. Absolutely railed through those. It's because we were so mean on some of them. What's that power meter on there? Uh, like a power to max or something. I can't see a power meter. It's got time oh. time pedals on there. You don't see those no. as often. Ooh. Cool. Okay. And um, that's it for this week's show. You had a blast? Oh, yeah. It was great. And um, we'll see you back here same time next week. Adios. Is adios Spanish? <laughs>